affair tomorrow. Hutchie, I get the feeling that you feel like Rodney Ede is yesterday's man. It's a wrong fit. I mean, the Gold Coast Suns need to move into the next era, and he's not the guy. Rodney Ede took over a team that was bereft with culture, that had some serious off-field problems, and is going to take a long time to fix. They are playing spiritless football. I know they've got a lot of injuries, but if that continues, they have to, might look for the next beverage, Bolton, a younger coach to take them forward. Throw the keys to Tom Lynch as captain, get a young coach in, and it's okay to put your hand up sometimes and say square pig round hole. Well, we've been critical here of Rodney Ede, me included. There's no point sugarcoating it. Rodney's come in to join us and we appreciate your time, Rodney. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Craig. Nice to talk to you. Do you think our criticism of you has been fair or unfair? Um, oh, I think unfair. There's no doubt about that. Um, I think any coach is gonna is gonna say that. I think uh, I think your point you mentioned on there, but I'd heard so I'm actually paraphrasing yep. that uh, that I was appointed to take to the extent to make play finals, etc., etc. Uh, that wasn't the sole reason. I think any coach who gets appointed, obviously, they want to obviously build towards finals. Um, but it was obviously a few areas that needed addressed. I was I was told about that when I got the job. Um, so that was spoken, and that's never been spoken about really about public. But I'm, I'm assuming that's what the main reason you took the job. You spoke about it as much at your press conference, where you referenced top four aspirations yeah. and not support. In fact, let's have a look at what you had to say. There you go. You can have talent and potential in spades, but there is a lot of hard work. We have the belief that we're good enough and we can compete. When I say compete, I'm talking with the top four teams. So that was at your introductory press yep. conference, yep. and you only had seven wins since then. The record yep. doesn't stack up at the moment. No, that's right. And now there are some reasons and some, some things that were... We think we've improved in a lot of areas. We think, we think our culture's really growing. Um, um, you've got to build the right foundation box, because you can win games and whatever the case may be, but but you need to do it the right way. And there were, there were a lot of issues that were spoken about last year, which are public. There's a lot that we haven't spoken public about. Um, so we're building, building that. We think we've had a lot of growth in that area. We've had a lot of growth in our leadership. Um, so obviously the wins haven't come. So we, we believe that there's blue skies ahead. Um, you know, that, that would be hard for Suns fans to yeah. cop, I reckon. Like, culture... Um, the culture must have been horrendously bad that you inherited if seven wins later the club is in your view a better place than what it was well it's not only my view i think you should ask ask the board and, and people like that and the ceo so i was what was so bad about it when you inherited um well i wasn't there so you should talk to people who no, were but there. You've, you've referenced it you've said you walked in the culture yeah. in a complete well way. well we've changed a lot with uh, the way players attack their footy professionally um and i think it was well documented last year the the off-field elements and that was even before when the when the Q Triple C got involved, um, which was uh, the end of the previous season, um, and that continued on last year with some, with some different things, which was obviously public, and we made some changes and and made some hard decisions. So I think I think that proves that we're on the right track. Rodney, in, in regards to your your best player, or not best players, but the young players who could be A grade players that you haven't had in your time, really. Uh, obviously, uh, O'Meara, Swallow. Uh, and Dion Presti has played, but has missed some footy as well. What's the selling point for that, those guys to keep them at the club moving forward with uh, where you're at at the moment? Well, first on David Solo, David has said, I think he said publicly, but people haven't picked that up, and he said to us that he's, that he's staying and wants to stay. He's got, he's got 12 months on his contract, so... Jager is, uh, hasn't played a game in, in the two years that I've been there, so obviously now probably Tom Lynch has taken the mantle of the second-best player, so I think Jager was the second-best player. Um, uh, and that David's only played six games. Um, Jager, I think, um, is a very professional young man. Um, he's got a great integrity. He's a very loyal individual and a very intelligent individual. He was uh, thought some changes need to be made in certain areas, which we have made with some uh, high performance, um, some other areas. I don't think he was happy with his rehab previously. Um, so a lot of changes have been made, which I've alluded to with Craig, and, and there's a lot of air staff and a whole range of different things. So I think he can see blue skies ahead. Obviously, at, at times we haven't had players in, and um, our last three or four weeks I've been really pleased with the effort. You know, sometimes you are on demand, and, and that, that happens. Um, but if you see the effort, I think he can see where we're headed, and we've spoken to him about that. Um, so do you, are you hoping to get a commitment from Jager? Uh, before the season's out, or you think? It's... Oh, you certainly like to. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. But we're not going to rush him on that. I mean, he just wants to get back to play footy. You know, he's due to play in a couple of weeks' time. Um, I think 
like anyone that has an ACL, they miss 12 months. Well, he's virtually missed two years. They're going to have some doubts in their mind um, if he missed a long time of footy. Uh, so I think, you know, from our point of view, we're not going to push him. We're going to come along steadily if he plays two, if he plays three, if he plays four games in the full, so be it. And your chairman made some comments uh, during the year, which we'll just run now. I think they made some chronic errors, and with great respect to our inaugural coach, I think we, there's no way we should have had a junior coach. Rocket's got a three-year deal here, and I am not a change merchant for the sake of change. I am a great believer in loyalty. I get very nervous when a, a club's 16th and their board has so many things they can take responsibility for and is still blaming ghosts of the past. How did you feel about Tony's comments there? I didn't hear them directly because I think they were just before we were playing. Um, that's the first time I've heard it live, if that's the right phrase. Um, yeah, I mean, having been in that situation myself in previous clubs, you sort of... It's not, uh, it's not the, the greatest look, I suppose, from a coaching point of view. But Tony's a very, very passionate man and I think... His, his passion for not only the club, but passion for the Gold Coast as an area and, and the supporters. Now, there's been a lot of positive feedback about since Tony's been on board. He's going to bring a lot of great things to the club. Um, he does shoot from the hip a bit at times, but I think his, his passion and uh, uh, verve around the place is going to be real positive. And now, now we had a fan forum, I don't know, three or four weeks ago, um, which uh, the, a lot of fans turned up to, and it just showed the passion that they've got for the club. Um, and again, on leadership, I think Gary turned up. He, did, you know, he wasn't invited, and he invited the three vice captains. They turned up as well and spoke as well. So, I think there's a lot of, a lot of positivity around the club, and certainly led by Tony. So, Gary last year, Gary Ablett, I don't reckon was a good captain for you last year. I think he took too long to sign that contract, and um, I, I thought there were things he did just off field that took it took him a while to realise that he had to lead in a different way. And I was really surprised you didn't at least go with co-captains this year. There was a lot of talk that you were going to make a change. We're having a look at Gaz now. Why didn't you change the leadership, given that I, I know you must have been disappointed with some of the stuff he did last year? Um, yeah, I, that, I spoke to Gary at the end of the year. Um, I thought he was still the best the best person to take us forward and it was a club decision. Um, we had to talk to the board and CEO and the football manager involved but certainly from a footy point of view, uh, from a footy uh, department point of view, I thought he was still the best person. I didn't think Tom or Stephen May who's obviously grown a lot in the leadership stakes and uh, you knows rated extremely highly in internally. Dion and Jake is probably the next one that hasn't played enough footy. I, I didn't think they were right to take the leadership and have that pressure on them to form. And both were coming, all of them were coming into contract, so there's a whole range of different uh, aspects to that. Um, I Did think you they, tell him he needed to change, though? Uh, we had, had a chat about uh, where his growth could be. Yeah. Um, I think the good thing about Gary is that he's had some feedback from different people, including, including the coaches and myself, that he's uh, had a frank discussion and he puts his opinion across and he can see that he can, uh, he can improve in certain areas. Um, I mean, he hasn't been a leader for long. I don't think he's probably a natural leader at Geelong, uh, from, that's from externally looking at it, and, and thrown into a really young group um, and he's played Five to an extraordinary now, level. Though. He's played yeah. to an extraordinary level. Um, yep. Oh uh, yeah, no doubt about that. And I, I just didn't... Uh, now, the, now the people questioned the board had asked whether there was right to go to co-captains. Um, uh, we decided on a, on a model where it was one captain with the three vice-captains. Um, so any, I thought if, if we appointed Tom Lynch as captain, then in 12 months' time, Stephen May actually went past him, was the best captain. You didn't want to make a change, or you had a Michael Richardelli for a captain. Was it beneficial to have a captain for 12 months and then you make another change? I, I just didn't know whether that was beneficial for the group. Rodney, there was speculation uh, over the pre season in the past that Gary doesn't like to play without, you know, whether it be you know, uh, anti inflammatories or uh, anything else like that. How frustrating has that been? There was also a report that he didn't want to play a lot of the pre season games with an injury when maybe the coaching staff would have liked him liked him to? Is that, is that correct, that you had frustrations with Gary, that he likes to do things his way a bit too oh, often? Oh, no, not really. No, there's a little, no, he's a bit quirky. Yeah. He's a bit quirky at times. Um, but I, I don't think you're going to force any player, let alone a great player, to play with an injury during a pre-season mm -hmm. game. Um, and he had, a, he had a sore foot and he had a strained tendon in his, in his foot. So he, we probably could have pushed him out for the, the last nab game. But... Him being who he is as a greater player, and I think it was two years earlier he didn't play a pre-season game and got 40 possessions in round one. So I think you can trust a, a player of that uh, of that magnitude of the, their own body and what they need to be able to get to the line. But 
Uh, as far as the mm. uh, anti-inflammatories, that was blown out of proportion a bit. He he he, he does take anti-inflammatories. Um, he probably didn't early early days, mm. um, and some painkillers, etc. Right. But but he's very big on his on his body, mm. and he doesn't want to jeopardise uh, by putting some wrong yeah. things inside his body. But after he talks to the doctor, he's fine. He's okay. So before I ask you about it, let's hear what you had to say about Rory Thompson last week. I thought he was very poor. We had no kicks. His man kicked four goals. So how do you think he played? Uh, he kept victory, I guess, to know. He was, sorry? He was on victory most of the first uh, couple of Griffiths, could he? Well, that's why he had to move him forward. So, no, I thought he was very poor. Are they they're your grandchildren? They uh, have my grandchildren. Yeah. I should have mentioned their names. Even they look disappointed for Rory. Uh -huh. I mean, that was, that was harsh. Is, did, is he the sort of player who can take that? He I thought is. This I, was spoke a new... to, I spoke to Rory last week and I spoke to him again today. He said, oh, I didn't hear them. He said, he said, yeah, I was poor. And he said, that was fine. And it was as much... <laughs> it's um, after the game, because I was really disappointed in the game. I, I, yep. I was really pleased with our previous three efforts, even though they were 50, 60, 40-point losses against Sydney where they 120 tackles, 118 tackles. Now, the effort were undermanned, but it was an enormous effort. Now, I was really pleased when we played West Coast in Perth and we lost, we won contested ball. The, the players really tried hard. And as a coach, you cannot be critical of players who try hard. But I thought with the players back against Richmond, we had a chance to win the game, and I was really disappointed that in the clutch moments, we didn't perform the way we should. So there was a bit of disappointment. And the journo asked, as a, as a Gold Coast journalist, who's a Southport person and loves the Southport locals, so... Uh, the question was, you'd be happy to have Rory back. He played really well. And I said, well, I didn't think Rory played very well at all. So maybe I'll put it a bit stronger than I think, but Rory's fine. Before we let you go, not, not to back over it, one of my points about questioning your future was the fit. Like, I, I don't I have full respect for your, your role in footy and your role in coaching and the role you're doing at Collingwood. I, I questioned that um, you, they bought in what they thought was a coach to finish off the job and were, thought they were close to a flag than Guy McKenna had been able to deliver them. And... It didn't look like a rebuild at that stage, and clearly it's a bigger rebuild or a refurnish or whatever you want to call it. Do, do you? And well, I, I I'm question just on that. They no, they internally they didn't think they were closer to a premise so, than what you, so what you, you thought, think or what you think. Yeah. So That's you so. thought you were getting a rebuild, and do you still think? No, no, not a rebuild. No, 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 not a rebuild. So how do you, how do you, you see? Can't rebuild. It's a build on what's already there. It's a build. So, so maybe, maybe the build, uh, the foundation wasn't as, was as strong as so, what you thought. So you've had a good look at it. When, when does success come and will you be there? Do you think you're the long-term coach? Yes, I do. And what do you define as success? Playing grand final day? Well, I think the, or on the record is saying they wanted two premierships before now, really. Like, it's clearly they're a long way behind where they thought they would be. Where do you think they can contend for a flag? And, yeah, and, I think you've got to take those comments, depending on who makes those comments, and... Are they footy people? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm asking you, when do you think you can compete to be a premiership side? So compete being a top four? Yeah. Um, I would think if we have a reasonable run with, with players' availability, I would have thought uh, earliest two years, be three years at the latest. And so you're happy to go into next year without any commitment on an extension yep. to prove yourself yes. next year? Yeah, fine. Yep. No worries. I've been around a long yep. time. Great. Yep. <laughs> and, we're, and, we're, and we're in a criticism business, yep. and, we're, and we're in a win-loss business, and that's uh, the bottom thing. You know, we can have, we can say what we like about culture, but we're building the right way. But at the end of the day, it's win-loss industry. Thanks so much for coming. We really appreciate you being up front and honest with us and joining us on Footy Classified. Thanks, mate. No Rodney, Ede, the Gold Coast Suns coach, joining us in the hot seat. Plenty more to come. Chris Judd on how to stop Paddy Dangerfield and the mystery behind Luke Hodges' return to footy after this.